Hello. In this video, I'm going to start off with talking about how to sort data. And there are a few ways to sort data in Excel. So this is one of the ways. We'll be going through the data tab and we will be doing it without a table. And sorting can be done on single criterion or multiple criterion. So when you talk about criterion, um, it's criteria, what you're looking for. Okay, are you sorting by last name? Are you sorting by last name then first name? Are you sorting by last name then first name then by middle name? And that would be multiple criteria. And just depends on what you're doing in regards to how many criteria you want to sort on. Now, one rule of thumb with sorting is that you want to remember if your name is Joe Trolls, you want Joe's last name to go with Joe's first name and his middle name also. Because if not, Joe will get a new name and it won't be his name that he had before. So it's always important 99.9% .9 of the time to make sure that all the information in the row comes with the information it's supposed to when it gets sorted. <clears throat> The other thing to remember is if I sort by last name and then I sort by first name, that if I do a single criteria sort, the first name would trump the last name. But if I do a multiple criteria sort by last name, then first name, then they both would stay as the sort. So that's what I'll show you here in this little lesson. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna use our workbook that we were using before, which is our 09 vet clinic patients. And we are going to be utilizing the patient list worksheet. And we are going to Start off by selecting E5. So I'm going to go to patient list and I'm going to select E5. So E5 is the owner number. And with the owner number, we are going to come up here to the data tab and we are going to go to the sort and filter group. And notice there is A to Z, Z to A, sort, filter, clear, reapply, and advanced. So A to Z is sorting from smallest to largest. We also call that from lowest to highest or A to Z in 1 to 10. Descending is largest to smallest or highest to lowest or Z to A or 10 to one. So I like to remember A to Z is ascending. Ascending starts with an A, A to Z, if that'll help you out. So we are going to go from smallest to largest. So let's look. Nikita, or Nikki, excuse me, is a cat, okay, a female cat. Owner number four, when I sort by owner number from A to Z, now everything moves around, but I wanna make sure that everything came the way it was supposed to, okay? So if I go looking for Nikki, Nikki is right here, Nikki's number four, okay? And that information kind of stayed together with one another, which is important, okay? You wanna make sure that they do stay together. All right, so that's a single criterion sort. I All I did was pick the first available cell underneath my row headings in the column that I wanted to sort by. So that's one option. There's a lot of options you're gonna see. So now I'm gonna pick A5. I'm gonna pick Hattie here. He's a dog, Scottish Terrier, owner number one. Okay, so over here in E, I'm sorting in ascending order, one to greatest, which happens to be 51. Okay, now 
I have Hattie over here. Okay, now it's not sorted by anything over here. It's sorted by E. So I'm in A5. And this time I'm going to sort A to Z. Please note that you can also do this on the home tab in the editing group over here in sort and filter. So I'm going to pick A to Z. And then Akemi comes to the top. Okay, Akemi is a dog male number 51. Okay, now if I scroll on down here looking for our Nikki down here, we're not sorted anymore by column E. We are sorted by patient name. So we see A, Akemi, all the way down here to what? Wheatley, the dog. So it's in alphabetical order by this. So essentially the column E ascending order went away when we went from sorting from E to A because it's a single criterion sort. All right, press save. All right, now we're going to sort on multiple criteria. So I'm going to click over here to client list. And this one's going to be done a little bit differently. I'm going to select A4 all the way over to N56. And first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of review. I'm going to name this range clients. So I'm going to come up here to my name box and I am going to name it clients. And of course, after I'm done typing in the name box, I am going to press enter. Okay, so with that said, I am going to go to the data tab this time. I'm going to go to the sort and filter group, but this time I'm going to use the command called sort. And I get the sort dialog box. And I can sort by multiple levels. So <clears throat> it says sort by, and we're going to sort our first one by last name. And it's going to be right here. And then I can sort on values, cell color, font color, or cell icon if I had them. Okay. So I am going to do value for this first one. Eventually, you'll see us do something else in ascending order. That's a single criterion sort. I could be done and press OK. It's another way to do what we just got done doing in columns A and E on the other worksheet. But if I want to do multiple criterion, I click add level. And now I come down here and I pick first name values. I'm going to do it on A to Z as well. I can also move these around. So if I wanted to sort by first name, then last name, I can rearrange these by pressing the arrow button. I can also copy a level and I can delete a level if I want to as well. I'm going to add another level. I'm going to do middle initial value A to Z. And then I am going to do one more. I am going to sort by suffix. So now I have four levels, value A to Z. So what is going to happen here is you're going to see column um, E be the initial sort, the primary sort. And then once E is all organized, it will organize within it by first name, which is C then middle initial, which is D, and then by suffix. So, I mean, the odds of us having someone with the same last name, first name, middle initial, to have to do it by suffix is, is pretty rare, but that's essentially what's happening. I'm gonna press okay. So remember, I am not organized by column A here. I'm not even organized by B, C, or D. I am organized by E in alphabetical order. So here's the alphabetical order. So I see two A's here, and then these go in alphabetical order, B, C. And I see all these B's, and then the B's are organized in alphabetical order. So if I come down here, Flynn is the first time where I see a repeat. So I have two last names of Flynn, and then I come over here, and I see them actually alphabetized the way they're supposed to. J comes before K because that was my second sort. <clears throat> so if you're going to do a multiple criteria sort, you need the sort command. You cannot do it with these two commands here because it will only sort one at a time. Sort, the command, is how you do multiple criteria. I can also get to that on the home tab in the sort and filter group. It's just called custom sort here. 
I can also, depending on what I've selected on what I've done um, later on in this lesson, get to it by right clicking when we're in other options. <clears throat> okay. Press save. Now, <clears throat> we are going to sort by cell attributes. So, A cell attribute, if I scroll down here, is essentially our conditional formatting or coloring or something we have applied to our worksheet. We're going to do cell, we're going to do the color this time instead of conditional formatting. But this is considered more advanced, so you need that sort command as well. So what we're going to do is we're gonna prep this first. And this is probably gonna take me just a second to do so. So we're also gonna use this as a review time too. So on patient list, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select column E. And then I am going to insert a new column. And if you notice, what happened is I get this data validation rule. Remember, the column is going to copy the properties to the column to the left of it. Though we selected E and the new column went to the left of E, it's really copying D, which is completely crazy, I know. Wouldn't it just copy from the one that you selected when you inserted it? So we, if you remember, put a data validation rule on D. So if I select D and then go to data and I come over here to data validation, you can see our list so we could pick male, female, and neutered here. And that's what's happened in E. It has, if I go to data validation, copied that data validation rule. So what we're going to do now is something I told you in the last episode. I'm going to clear it. So I'm going to select column E. I'm going to go to data validation. And remember, to clear a data validation rule, it is not circles. Circles are just when you have a data validation rule that is not compliant, if you will. You can use it to um, kind of highlight the ones and go through and figure out if you want to fix them or not because they violated the rule, if you will, when you were entering the data. So I'm going to remember data validation, and then I'm clicking clear all to get rid of the rule. And then I press OK, and that little input box should go away. All right, so we are going to come over here to E4. And we are going to call this column spade slash neutered. And I am going to press enter. I'm going to change the column width by right clicking here on the column to 17. I can also go through the home tab if I wanted to. And now we're going to go through and we are going to make our animals um, categorize that if they are spayed or if they are neutered. Uh, females get spayed, males get neutered, just in case you weren't sure um, of how that works. So I'm going to put in capital S's, and of course, all of this is important. Every character counts. In all the columns, it tells me to put in this information. So this will take me just a second to set up and double check myself as I'm talking and typing to make sure I have done it correctly. You know, it's important that you put in the right animal with the right spay or neuter because if someone thinks that it's been spayed or neutered and it really hasn't, then you're going to run into some problems. Someone might be upset and you might actually put it under the wrong animal and then they wouldn't get the procedure taken care of. So it's important as a data entry person, receptionist, whomever's in charge of doing this, okay, vet tech, that you put in this information correctly for your business and for your clients. All right, so now we are going to go in and we are going to put in our neutered, okay? So I'm going to repeat that same process now with a N. And not every one of these will have will have a 
letter S or N because some have not been spayed or neutered. Clearly have more neuters than we have spades. Spades, excuse me. Now I'm just going to go back through and double check because it was a lot of them to type in. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how we can tell if we've done this right with a feature that I don't think I've talked to you yet about in class. So that will be nice because I can show you a quick way. I mean, it's just a way we know um, to double check because we're following step by steps. But it will be a way for us to make sure that we're hitting all our numbers in terms of what we're supposed to have. Real world, this wouldn't work as well because we probably wouldn't have numbers hiding in the background. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Okay. So I'm going to press save after all that. And now I'm going to select column E. And I am going to come in to my data validation. I'm going to press data validation. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to make myself another list. So from here on out, I will have the ability to use this feature with all my new clients. So if you remember, we select the column first, then we go to data, data tools, data validation. Then we set up our settings and we're picking a list and we are going to type in N, N comma S. Remember the comma separates the list item. So N will be on one row of our list and S will be on another. And we know that because of the comma. That's how that reads. And I am going to go to input message. And I'm not going to have a title. I am going to type in S equals. And I am going to type in spade. And I'm going to type in comma space N equals neutered. So everyone knows what those two stand for if they hover over this. And I am not even going to put an error alert setting up in here. I'm just going to press OK. So now here's my little input message that tells me what each one of those stands for. All right, so that had nothing to do with sorting. That just had to do with prepping. So now we're going to sort. We're going to sort by selecting, including the column headings. Excuse me. <clears throat> we are going to, excuse me, we are going to first format this. So we're going to select E5 all the way down to E100. And the reason why we're going down to 100 is for future clients. You don't think we'd have any more past this row, so that's why we're going to stop. I'm going to go to the Home tab, and I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting, and I am going to do a new rule, and I'm going to do Format Only Cells That Contain, and I am going to do under, um, cell, under Format Only Cells With, I'm going to do No Blanks, okay? So I'm essentially doing a very simple format and I'm going to just do a fill color and I'm going to pick the one, two, third one down and the sixth one over this little salmon color. Remember we don't get a screen tip with fill in format cells so it is if you don't know what the color is you can come over to um, you can come over here to font if you needed to, um, and you could pick the color that way. But I know it's this one, and I am going to press OK. And then I am going to press OK. And I'm going to scroll up. And the ones that have no blanks, essentially, the ones that have words that get that salmon-y color. All right. 
So, with that said, okay, I am now going to name this range. So, I am going to select A4 over to F57. I'm not selecting G. And I'm going to come up to my name box and I'm going to type in patients, P A T I E N T S. I'm going to press enter. And remember, all this was on the formulas tab in the define names group. I could have used any of these features that we talked about in the previous lesson. I can go to name manager and I can see both of them there just in case I needed to edit them. Okay, so now, now I finally sort. So I'm going to go to the data tab. Remember, this is advanced, so I want the sort. Okay, and we sorted, if you remembered, based on spade or neutered. So that's the column I want. And instead of doing values this time, I am going to do cell color. And that says no cell color. And we're going to drop this down, and we see our only swatch. Yes, this is called a swatch of color. If you've ever gone to a fabric store, sometimes they have swatches. Um, little fabric squares, if you will, and that's where that name comes from. And that's the color I'm going to pick. If I had multiple formats going on in here, I could do that. I can put those at the top or I can put them at the bottom. Um, we are going to leave them at the top and I'm going to press OK. And what happens is, is now I'm sorted by column E and all of my spade or neuters are at the top and all of my ones that are not are down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to press save. All right. And that is all for sorting. Thank you.